Hi, my name is Mark Rigueur from Microsoft Finance in a Servant Tool Business Group. I've been at Microsoft for 18 years and my job has changed dramatically in the last year since using Power Review. The business reviews that I drove move from structured lecture to dynamic conversation. The purpose of the next video is to show you how easy it is to use Power Review out of the box by building a sales dashboard in a matter of minutes. So here we have a Power Pivot that has all sales information for a group at Microsoft. We have basically a raw table here that has all our data pool and we have created three mapping tables so we can see aggregate views of our products, time and our licensing pricing level. We have loaded this Power Pivot in a SharePoint. This is the same one and what we can do is go to this button on the right called Create Power View Report. Once you click on that button you're going to be able to go and create your Power View. And this is basically your sandbox environment. So we have four sections when you get your Power View. You have your data here with your main data sources and the three mapping tables. You have a filtering area. The middle is where you're going to create your views. And on the left, you have a PowerPoint-like view where you can create different slides. So, you know, in the past, we would create views in Excel and uh, sometimes copy the graphs in a PowerPoint slide. Here, you have everything into, in one view, so you can work just in PowerView. So, what we're going to do is start building our views, uh, our sales dashboard. So, we go to Data Pool, and all we have to do is click on Actual to bring the actual, and on the screen, Actual will appear. We're going to bring Budget. We're going to bring variance to budget in dollars and variance to budget in percentage. And here, I'm going to want to do some filtering. So I'm going to bring area, and I'm going to say I just want a certain area. And I'm going to select uh, a certain fiscal year. And in this case, we're going to bring uh, one fiscal year. We're going to bring, uh, we're going to select one. And this is going to be basically uh, the numbers we're going to drill into. So here we have 490 million actual, 478 million budget. The difference between these two is 11.6 million, which represent a 2% positive variance to budget. Now, uh, I like to leave total numbers in place so people who see charts can, can also see the actual numbers. So what we're going to do is explore. So again, we click on actual. And because we have filter uh, for certain areas, we're going to see the same amount, 490 million. But here what I'm going to do is look at another dimension. We're going to look at time. So we're going to bring quarter. And when I click outside in the white canvas, my menu is a certain way. But when I click on the table, I have a few options here. And I can select bars, lines, pie charts. And here what we're going to do is show uh, a stack bar, uh, which is going to change it uh, to a stack bar. So here we can see also how easy it is to do out of format. And we can see that Q4 had a huge uh, had the majority, nearly half of the 490 million, uh, closer to 40% coming in the fourth quarter. So what we can do is size this and, and make it uh, different sizes. And we can add another dimension here, and we can add um, sector, for example. And so we can see, and, uh, and it's hard to see, so we can go to layout and put, we can put the legend at the bottom. And we resize this, and we can see uh, for uh, two different businesses. What we can also do is add data labels. And um, I like titles that pop. So what I can do here is not put a chart title and put my, my own title by putting a text box. And here we're going to call this simply um, revenue by quarter. Revenue by quarter. We're going to make this a bit bigger. And again, change the font. Maybe we're going to put Arial Black, something that stands out. So we know this chart is about revenue by quarter. There we go. So that's our first chart. And this tells us the distribution 
by uh, the different businesses and also by time, knowing the fourth quarter is a lot bigger. So we can continue and add other views. We can bring again actuals. And I notice that I have a, a geography dimension. So here I can bring sub-regions. Uh, and I notice that there is a zero here, and it looks like it's a, a, an area where we can do some judgment. So what we can do is click, hold, and drag that sub-region in here. And we can unfilter uh, this specific one. You're going to see it goes away. And a very useful chart when doing these kinds of views is to do a cluster bars. And the first thing I like to do when I do cluster bars is sort them in descending order, not based on uh, the alphabet, but based on the amounts. This shows us right away that the top country is Byzantium. So what we can do is do the few things we did for the previous chart, which is uh, add some data labels. We can put it outside in, and we can remove the chart title, and we can add our own title. And we can make this a little bit bigger. Very easy, very effective use of uh, the auto formatting. And we can call this, again, we, do, we can copy and paste, Control C. We do Control V. And we can call this revenue by geography. And so I'm going to put this in here. I can put an overall title here. I'm going to call this uh, revenue summary. Uh, again, I can make this a little bit smaller and change the font. And that's the title of the chart. So here I have on the, on the left side of the chart the total revenue. Uh, by geography and uh, by time and sector. So what we can do is show a little bit of performance versus our budget. So I can highlight this chart, co do control C, then click on the empty space, control V, and I will, to show the variance to budget, all I have to do is simply change uh, uh, the value that we're using in the chart. So you see on the bottom right, I have the value as sum of actual. I can take this out and bring variance to budget. And as I click, my chart values have changed from the total revenue to the variance to budget. Uh, again, I like to sort them based on the values. And you can see here that the top performer, out of my 11.6 million variance to budget, half of that comes from one country that contributes to that positive variance. Again, we copy the title. And we call this revenue, we're going to call this variance to budget by geography. So we're going to put an acronym, VTB, for variance to budget. And we're going to do variance to budget for two other dimensions. One is by uh, existing customer versus new customers. And the other one will be by product. So again, I can do Control C. And I'm going to, I can copy and paste that view. Uh, I can take out the sub-region from uh, the value, and I can bring uh, from my available fields the uh, pricing level, which will tell me which revenue comes from existing customer or new customers. And on this case, I'm going to put a chart that is, uh, I'm going to change the style of the chart to, uh, to make it uh, horizontal. So in this case, we're going to do uh, clustered, but this way. And we're going to see the performance we can see based on what's coming from new customers or renewal or recurring. So I make this a bit smaller, and I call this variance to budget by pricing level, VTB by pricing level. And then my last view I'm going to do is going to be by products. So here, again, I take pricing level out, and I'm going to bring uh, my view by products. So I did some groupings. Uh, and again, I see some zeros. So I can click, hold, and drag, and take out the zeros that have no value in terms of giving me incremental information. And now we have uh, vines to budget, and we're going to call this by by business group, and we're going to call an acronym by BG.
So here I've created in 10 minutes a very powerful dashboard and, and the, the advantage, uh, all this data is connected and you will see in the next video that you can actually, um, when, when you click on any place, um, all the data is connected. So, you know, if we click on EPG commercial, you're going to see the data changing and showing EPG commercial. So what we can do now is save this view in PowerPoint. This is an incredible feature because it allows you to have dynamic PowerPoint slide, which is really useful when you do business review. So here in this case, we do export to PowerPoint, and the first thing it's going to do is save this view. Um, once it saved the view in PowerView in your SharePoint, you can click Save and now, and now save your actual PowerPoint presentation. So here we're going to call this Sales Dashboard. And as you can see here, I'm saving an actual PowerPoint presentation. I hit Save. And then I can go to my PowerPoint and open that view. So if I go to the folder I just saved, I can go to, it was in the BI folder, my sales dashboard. I open it, and you're going to see the actual view we just created in a PowerPoint environment. Here, to make this dynamic, uh, you have to first go in, in your slideshow format. And what it's going to do when you do that, it's going to see if you have access to uh, this data, which is given through the SharePoint. So if the person who created the power of you in SharePoint give you access, you'll be able to interact. And you will see, be able to see the button on the, the bottom right of the slide. So once I click Interact, I'm now going to have the ability to interact with the PowerPoint slides. So here I can put away the filter. Uh, so I have more room to see the visuals. The filter is still here. That's just hidden. And I can now interact by clicking anywhere in the slide, and you'll see the data change. This feature, again, is very useful when you do business review, and you can have the slide change as you talk about different trends and patterns. There you go. We were able to build a very powerful sales dashboard in a matter of minutes. In the next video, watch me interact with a very senior leader at Microsoft, Susan Hauser, who is the Corporate Vice President of the Enterprise and Partner Group. Together, we're going to explore data and discover insight and talk about the impact Parview has had on her business. Thank you very much.